Amanda here. Thanks for joining me. So I'm going to show you how to do a journal cover using this, which is fabric tape. Okay. Now, in the first instance, this will be going out to my subscription club and then I uh, may well add it to YouTube after as well so that my other followers can um, see it. <laughs> so I was inspired to try this product by following um, Kathy Arta who is Paper Phenomenon. If you're in the USA, she does sell it on her website. Um, I got mine from Temu. Okay, you can get it on AliExpress. Um, if you're in the UK, My Creative Spirit has something similar, but hers doesn't have a backing on. Hers is just like sticky tape, but it's similar. It's like a fabric-based tape. Now, um, it comes in like 33 meters you can get different widths mine is just about one and a half inches now what's the benefits of making your album out of this instead of wrapping it uh, with sheets of cardstock so i've put up a video this week doing a journal cover using cardstock it took it takes me about an hour to do a cardstock wrapped journal cover Okay, it's time consuming and, um, you know, you're having to use a lot of glue, you're having to do a lot more measuring, etc, etc. And cardstock can be bulky, especially when you get into the gusset section, you know, with the layers of cardstock. And then if you want to strengthen it with Tyvek or something like that, you're adding more bulk. Whereas this, it's actually called acetate fabric tape, if you're searching for it. And it's um, it's thin. It's wafer thin, but it's super strong. So you don't need the Tyvek to strengthen your spines, as it were, you know, in between there. So that they don't, you don't, you just don't need it. It's unnecessary to use both. You can use both, but I don't think it's necessary personally. Um, the other good thing about it is you can just cut it with your scissors or your trimmer, the same as you can cardstock, but you're using less of it. Um, so it actually works out cheaper than using cardstock i do believe um what's the other benefit of it the main benefit is that it's super lightweight so you're not adding bulk you can absolutely when you have constructed your album you can layer over this fabric tape with um you know your patterned paper or your digital papers paper will glue to it easily because i've tested it here we go Okay, it doesn't lift, it glues lovely, as long as you use a decent um, glue, um, it will adhere perfectly fine, so that's not a problem. Um, so it's not like duct tape or gaffer tape or anything like that, those are super bulky, okay, I don't even think they're very nice to work with, and you, uh, you know, you try sticking your patterned paper to duct tape, which is shiny, you know, it's got a plastic coating on it, this is um, matte, and it's not got a plastic coating in it. It's ever so slightly ribbed and there's obviously some sort of plastic within the weave. So it's super strong. It's acid free, all of that malarkey. But the main benefit is once you've mastered using it, because it can be tricky to use. I'm not going to lie until you've mastered it. But once you've mastered it, you can make an album cover in less than half the time of a traditional cardstock wrapped cover okay so i've cut my chipboard to sizes that i want and i have cut several strips one two i've actually cut six i think three four five six strips to the height okay so it's the same height so what you want to do and another step that i do that you don't have to but what i did do was i've inked all the edges and I used an archival ink, not a distress ink, because distress ink can come off. This is a acid-free permanent. And the only reason I've done that is because as I was playing with it, when you're peeling it away, you can be left with a little bit of a white core. So I've inked mine, okay? Now, once it's on your covers and you've laid over with paper, you're probably not going to see it. But I didn't want to risk it. Right, so... You're going to need something like a pokey tool or something like that to... And where's mine gone? Let me find a second one. I've got another one here. To remove the backing. 
Okay, now you want to be on a non-stick surface when you're doing this and we're going to start with the spine. So you remove your backing, okay, this is the longest part of this process is removing the backing. Um, it can be a little bit uh, fiddler, okay, because it is wafer thin is this tape, but it's also not going to, um, it's not going to rip, it's, fab it's fabulous stuff, okay. Now it's super sticky, so I'm using a metal tool here to help me remove that back in. And when you come to the end of your piece, you want to be careful that it doesn't flip back on itself and stick to itself. It will stick like bilio to your hands. So I'm using this. And then what you want to do is you just want to attach your spine on there about, about half of an inch. I'm just getting my... Okay. It doesn't matter terribly if you don't get it straight, so long as you've got, um, you know, a decent overlap so that you can cover with your paper after. All right, so I'm just going to attach that there. I've not got it straight, but never mind. If you've got any overhang, then you want to be trimming it off. Okay, and then this cover here wants to attach to here. Now, one thing you can do is add quarter inch tape as a guide to space it with okay which i do advise if you're not very good at getting things perfect by eye okay so i'm adding quarter inch tape between my spine after that piece of um card there okay I'll trim it off i've not got mine perfectly straight but hey ho, I'm just showing you, okay? And I'm just going to trim where the overhang is at the top, okay? So then because you've got that spacer tape there, you can see easily or easier where to line up your next piece. So you want to line up your next piece. I'm going to put my spine on that black mark there so that I know I've got this one fairly straight and I'm starting at the top and then moving down to commit okay and then do the same at the other side so you can see immediately that it's it's going to be quicker okay uh, the only slippery little bit is getting the actual slippery little sucker of a backing off okay but that's where if you use a pokey tool or something like that it will help you she says Oh, I've lost it. Where's it gone? There we go. Because it's so thin, you see. Um, but it's 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 brilliant stuff. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to put that about on there. I'm going to try and get it straight. I'm using my grid mat to help me. Okay. And I'm going to line that up. Doesn't matter if this is not perfectly straight. What you want straight are your chipboard pieces with each other as it were so i'm going to add some more of this quarter inch tape okay to give me my spacing so that i can put my other piece on a bit easier i'm, I'm actually going just over but it, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect so i'm making a journal cover with this i'm going to be doing quite a big a big journal so the other benefit of using this fabric tape for your journal covers okay is that your covers are going to be it's going to be lighter weight because you've not got the bulk of the cardstock and it, it's going to be more flexible sometimes when you make cardstock covers they're a little bit stiff you know whereas this because it's fabric it will be loosey-goosey it'll be perfect okay so now I can line it up on my grid paper again, on my grid mat, sorry, okay, and as long as the chipboards are straight, that's what I'm following, so I'm not following the edge of the tape, I'm following the line for my chipboard and I'm giving it up against that red tape, so I'm just going to hold that firmly with my hand and I'm going to, I'm not very good at the left side, I should really turn it, turn it round and so I'm lining it up first before I commit at the top. Okay, and then 
I've got it spaced there with my spacer tape and I'm just carefully placing it. And there we go. That's that bit done. Okay, so already you have got this fantastic book cover. And as you can see, look at that. It's, and it's flexible. It will move both ways without cracking. You don't have to worry about it. And it's a lot less. It's just less material. Okay, so you're using less product as it were. So what we're also going to do is put tape either side here and then tape top and bottom. So I'll pause the video while I just do that and get all of the backing off and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've added it top and bottom as well. So you add the sides, the side lengths are only the same as the height of the chipboard and then the longer piece top and bottom needs to be about an inch each side, roughly or half an inch. Um, but yeah, that needs to be the longest and you put the um, sides on first and then the back and the top on kind of underneath these. So you're layering the whole thing on top of the top and bottom. Now, I've just thought of another advantage of using this tape. Um, using the tape means you don't have to join two large pieces of cardstock together to make it fit because you can cut the tape to any size. Okay, you get 33 meters, 30, is it 30? It might be 33 yards. I'm actually going to add, get another one because I don't want to look now. Um, so, what you want to do here is just tidy up the you know, so that it's kind of even there. If you've got any overlap, make it kind of even, okay? Use scissors. It is very sticky stuff, so either use some scissors that you keep to one side or you can always clean your scissors afterwards with rubbing alcohol or something similar, okay? Because it is very sticky. All right, and then you're just going to mitre your corners and fold the it in like you would a normal album the only thing you need to do is before you wrap the top and the bottom over if you've used spacer tape lift it up okay and pull it back but only a small amount not the whole way leave that on there until you decide what you back what you're going to do with the rest of the cover which i'll explain in a minute all right so then you just want to mitre now when you're mitering you want to leave a space about quarter of an inch roughly um so shall i mark it oh just be careful it doesn't stick everywhere i'm just gonna do a little bit of a pencil mark just so that i'm not undercutting it okay about there about quarter of an inch you always leave want to leave a space between the chipboard and where you cut so you've got a small amount. Otherwise, when you fold it over, you're going to end up with a gap. Okay, now I've said before on my previous video, if you're left with a gap and you can see any chipboard, don't worry about it. We're using black, colour it in with a black marker. Nobody will know. Okay. <laughs> so now you want to cut straight, you know, at an angle. We're mitering all the way across. Okay. All the way across. Sticky stuff. I might actually bring that in ever so slightly less. Just ever so slightly. I was just a little bit large, that one. Hopefully that I've not got a gap there now. Probably got a gap there now I've messed with it. I've got a hair on there. Let me get that off. It is very sticky, so yeah. Let me get that hair off. Okay. But it makes your album covers more flexible as well as, you know, adding strength without having to reinforce any of that, that area. And also you can use it and you can layer over the top on the inside as well. So before I wrap that over, I could layer over the top of my um, spine area with it, okay, in sections. Um, in fact, I might just do the... I might just do that bit, just gives it extra. But I don't think it's necessary, you know, because it's so strong anyway, 
you could literally line over there with cardstock and it'll be fine but i am going to do that so i'm going to use these other strips that i've already got cut and i'm going to go over the just the spine area and then i'll line the rest with patterned paper if i can get the this is the only downside to it is getting the silly backing off <laughs> Getting the silly backing off. Right, so I'm going to remove my spacer tape now because I'm going to add this, but you don't have to. Okay, so if you were sewing your signatures in, you could sew them into your cardstock and traditionally you'd have wings either side. Sew them in, glue them there and then attach them there With your and your spacer tape's going to help it adhere. Okay, um, I think I'm going to do mine... Um, midori style so i'm going to add this tape just down the joins there just for extra stability okay rub it into the center there i've got that tape in there to help it adhere there we go and i'm going to have the most sturdiest journal ever that i've ever made um and we'll see how it goes it's definitely going to be more flexible it's definitely not going to crack like you know it can happen with cardstock it can crack you've spent ages making your journal and then it cracks and the whole thing's ruined it's no good or you're having to bodge it and cover it up i've got something stuck to it hold on a minute there we go whereas with this it's not necessary okay and i'm not uh doing it for promotion and you know i don't get uh anything you know any discount from anywhere i'm not promoting any specific shop it's just something that i saw several other creators use and i wanted to have a go to see what it's like right so we start with the top and we um you need to now it is kind of once the backing's off it can sort of pull so you want to lift it up and attach it adhere it to the edge of the cardstock and you want to kind of pull but don't pull it too much because at the end of the day it has got fabric in it and if you pull it too much you'll stretch it okay so we're just rolling it around so that you don't get any kind of creases or bubbles okay and into that gusset there so you're kind of doing a rolling action to kind of you're almost like spreading it okay like that and then you can go in with your bone folder and you can burnish that to your heart's content my bone folder is not terribly clean um because it's fabric you can just give it a bit of a wipe um, I bet you can go in there with your bone folder and it's not going to crease you can move your spine about if you want you don't have to worry about it cracking that's the other benefit so I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the top again I am smoothing it along the edge there to kind of stick it to the edge of the chipboard first whilst pressing firmly down on the desk so that we don't get any bubbles okay and then i'm going to start and roll it around the edge okay just not too firm but not too much pressure because you don't want to start stretching it um and warping it okay <laughs> it's super sticky it is super sticky so you know it, it it's taken me um i i did do another i did do a trial run on this and uh yeah it stuck to everything um but it's just one of those things you need to get used to and then and hair, i seem to be shedding this hair on mine <laughs> never mind and then with the corner here you just do like you do with a traditional journal i need to start washing my bone folders and you're gonna tuck it in okay and fold it flat okay so tuck it in and fold it flat and at this side tuck it in i think i've cut this one too short but we'll see tuck it in and fold it flat okay i may well have cut that side a little bit too short um but never mind when i make a mistake it's just an opportunity for me to show you what to do if you make a mistake um 
do I have a black pen ready? <laughs> I'll get this ready in case I've made, made a boo-boo. So you kind of push inwards and then flatten, okay? Inwards and flatten. All right, so then you're just going to... I'm just going to lift that and prop it against my body so that I'm in shot. Again, I'm just keeping this fairly flat on the desk with a little bit of pressure, lifting this up so it's going against the edge of the chipboard. Okay. Have I done that right? Yeah, I think I have. And then roll it around. See, I've got a gap there. Have an eye because I've uh, cut it short. Uh, roll it around. Okay, that bit's fine. So on this bit where I've made a bit of a boo-boo because I cut it short, because I went back and messed with it when it was fine as it was, you can just colour that with a sharper. It's no bigger. I should have uh, trusted my initial instincts and left it alone. Okay, and then fold, 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 and wrap and wrap see how these are meeting up nicely just that one that i messed about with when i should have left it and it's perfect but where, which one is it i can't even tell which one it is oh it's here just color it with a little bit of sharper nobody will know and then i'll probably just um if i use this cover i'll just put little book corners on um okay so then you just give it a press Tap them edges to get them square. Okay. And it's absolutely so much easier. And it takes so... It, it literally halves the time. Now, I'm talking in between you and telling you things. But I made one earlier. I timed myself and I'd made a, an album cover in about less than 10 minutes. Okay. And this is a new product to me. So, you know, I was still faffing and it was sticking and... But that is lovely and tidy, okay? You've got a nice strong cover. It's flexible. It's not going to crack. And you can just then layer over these panels with your patterned paper. Like I say, either line over with patterned paper, then do your holes for your Midori style, or do your traditional sewn signatures where you sew them through the entire book, or do your hidden signatures um, sewing and then glue it in, whichever okay it's absolutely fabulous i think i have been converted and i think i will be using this from now on so there you go i hope that's helped thanks for watching take care and i'll see you very soon i will put the name of what to search for in the description box below but it is um ac acetate fabric tape okay thanks for watching bye for now